Chapter 13, Springing the Trap Odysseus was woken by the sun shining onto his face. Already the suitors were gathered, feasting and drinking. He got up to his feet and made his way to the hall. He stepped onto the threshold stone, lifted the latch and pushed the door open. He went from table to table, his arms outstretched, begging for food. One of the suitors said, Look, the old beggar is back. Oh man, come here, said another. Have some wine. He offered a cup of wine. The beggar walked over, but as he reached to take it, the suitor drew back his hand and tipped the wine all over the man's head. Old man, have a piece of meat, said another suitor. He picked up the shin bone of an ox and hurled it at the beggar, striking him on the forehead so that the red blood trickled down the red wine. All the suitors threw back their heads and bellowed with laughter. But then suddenly their laughter stopped. Penelope was coming from down the stairs from her bedchamber. She was dressed in bright silks with her hair hanging loose over her shoulders. Old Eurycelia was hobbling down behind her. When Penelope reached the bottom of the stairs, she stopped and turned to the suitors. For years you have fastened on my, on my husband's hall as your place of perpetual feasting. Your excuse has always been that you want to win my hand in marriage, and now the time has come for, you, for me to put you to the test. She reached across and took the bow from its wooden peg on the wall. Whomever can come closest to matching my husband in skill, whoever can draw a string across his bow and loose, loose an arrow through the rings of twelve ceremonial axe handles, he will be the one I will take, that I will take as a new husband. The time has come for me to bid farewell forever to these walls that welcomed me as a wife all those years ago. Penelope turned and nodded to Eurycelia. Straight away the old woman set to work. She took the twelve axes from the wall. She set them one behind the other, the blades to the ground, the handles pointing upwards, the rings in the row, just as she had remembered Odysseus doing it all of those years before. When everything was ready, Penelope turned to the suitors again. Now, which one of you is man enough to win me? There was a great hubbub and discussion among the suitors as to who should go first. They decided to take turns, following the direction that the wine jug took around as it took when it passed, was passed from hand to hand. The first to try was called Leodius. He took the bow in his fat white hand, swollen from months of feasting. He set the foot, he set the foot on the bow of the bow on the floor at his feet. He began to try to bend it. It sprang out of his hand and clattered to the ground. A second suitor tried and fared no better. Each of them in turn tried to string the bow and not one of them could do it. Some came closer than others, but not one of them succeeded. Soon they warmed the bow in front of the, so they warmed the bow in front of the fire and they rubbed beeswax into the wood to make it more subtle. Each of them tried again, but still not one of them could string the bow. Penelope stood with her arms folded and she watched. She shook her head. Perhaps today is not a lucky one, she said. Perhaps the day is not auspicious. She turned and made her way back up the stairs. Eurycelia followed, hobbling up slowly behind. As the old nursemaid climbed the stairs, the beggar, sitting among the shadows by the door, caught her eye. He winked and nodded. Eurycelia smiled. As soon as she was out of sight, she made her way out of the hall by a back way. She hurried around the threshold stone and she pulled the bolts across the doors, locking them firmly from the outside. Inside the hall there was silence, broken at last by Antoninus. It's not so much losing the woman I mind, she's pretty enough I grant you, but there's plenty of other fish in the sea. No, it's making ourselves seem such weaklings beside the memory of that cursed Odysseus.